I made a cathedral with a graveyard and catacombs underneath in The Sims 4. I built this in the Forgotten Hollow, the world that came with the Vampires game pack. And this is part of an ongoing project that I'm working on where I'm turning the Forgotten Hollow into a medieval themed world, but more modern medieval. I know that sounds confusing. What I mean is that it's not actually set in medieval times, but rather the buildings were constructed in medieval times and a lot of them are still standing and still in use to this day. Like this cathedral here, which I've staged for a funeral. I used the castle estate kit a lot on this build and I've been using that kit a lot lately, especially on this medieval themed world. But not just here, because if you know me, you know I love building dungeons in The Sims 4. And the brick walls and the castle gates that came with the castle estate kit are perfect for dungeons. As for this cathedral, I built it to be three stories tall, but I didn't really put anything on the second or third floor. In fact, Sims can't even get to the third floor. They can get to the second floor, but there's nothing there. The first floor is the only place inside the cathedral where anything is happening at all. Really, the cathedral is just one big room that's three stories tall, all to accommodate these really grandiose window feature walls. I don't know, maybe this build in particular is a little more Victorian than medieval, but it's fine. This build is where medieval goth and Victorian goth intersect. Like I said, I staged the first floor like a funeral. I raised this coffin and placed it over a table, and I placed a wreath and a sized up portrait on these easels. And I realized it's dark in here, so I threw in some lights real quick, and then I placed all of these church pews from my wedding stories. I picked out a few flowers, and then I messed with the swatches on everything, and I think I end up changing a lot of stuff to red, like the coffin. And I use a red rug that matches the red coffin, and the flowers are red, and it all just ties together. Oh, and I also put up some windows on the first floor because there weren't any yet, and I also installed the podium from high school years. One thing that you might have noticed is that there aren't any toilets on this lot. But it's fine in the Forgotten Hollow, there is literally a public toilet right there in the town square in the center of town. It's literally just across the street. And now we're outside working on the graveyard, starting with this mausoleum. And there's going to be a couple of coffins in the mausoleum, as well as a ladder. And that's how you get into the underground catacombs. But before I get started on the catacombs, I need to build the graveyard. Instead of a foundation, I used platforms on this mausoleum. I cut out a small little basement area just so I could place a ladder. And now that I know where the catacombs are going to start, I can get started on the actual graveyard. I got these tombstones from Debug, but if you download this lot into your game and you want to place your own Sims tombstones here, you can just delete those Debug tombstones. Actually, you might have to enable cheats and shift click and destroy object. But that's only if the game won't let you delete these tombstones in build mode. And also the graves themselves Themselves, those are just platforms with dirt on top. I've been using platforms a lot lately, but it's a really handy tool. What can I say? Okay, it is now the next day in real life. When I left off on this voiceover yesterday, I think I was talking about platforms, but I don't want to talk about that anymore because it's finally time to do the catacombs. Although the cathedral is looking very ornate and elaborate, the catacombs are definitely more elaborate. I took a lot of inspiration from the catacombs in Elden Ring when I was building this, and I didn't recreate them exactly. I I did the best I could in The Sims 4, but it's pretty close. I even build a giant room at the end that's supposed to be like a boss room. There's giant tree roots in there surrounded by candles and skeletal remains. And there are actually skeletal remains in the debug of Jungle Adventure. It's like a pile of bones and dirt. And I used that in a couple of places in this build, but my favorite skeletal object to use in the game now has to be the crystal skull that came with the crystal creation stuff pack. It looks so good and you can't even tell that it's supposed to be crystal when it's in an environment like this. It just looks like a skull. I know Crystal Creations has been really buggy since release for a lot of people, but buggy or not, these crystal skulls are probably one of my favorite objects in the game now, especially since I'm always building creepy basements and dungeons and medieval video game levels. Oh, and this is the room where I decided to hide skeletons behind these pillars because again, taking 
taking inspiration from Elden Ring, if you're walking down a room like this, there are going to be skeletons or gargoyles or something hiding around all of these corners waiting to ambush you. And that's what I imagine the enemies down here would be. Gargoyles, skeletons, and maybe a putrid tree spirit at the end. Of course, I put a bonfire at the entrance and another one in the boss chamber. And that archway that just looks like a hole in the wall, that is from the Werewolves game pack. As are the windows that I end up using down here a little bit later that also look like holes in the wall. I know it's weird that I would put windows down here in these catacombs because there's nothing on the other side. They literally just look out into the void. But they work out because they kind of look like little individual tomb chambers. It's very catacomby. I'm happy with the results and when you see it, you'll see why. But I'm getting ahead of myself because I haven't started putting those windows in yet. Right now, I'm still working on the skeleton hallway and I put a bunch of the tombstones from the vampires game pack in here. Actually, a bunch of tombstones. I really filled in the space. And now I'm finally incorporating the windows like I was talking about. And first I tried these windows with glass on them and I didn't really like them. And then someone from my chat suggested these windows from the werewolves game pack. And I just love the way they look in here. And also I'm using two different types of skeletons in this build. One of them is called Skelly Sim and it comes with Get to Work. And I forget what the other one is called, but it comes with Jungle Adventure. And I believe the default swatch is blue. And that one is holding a spear. And I didn't use the blue swatch on this build. I just used the regular bone colored swatch. Skeletons holding spears, hiding behind corners, waiting to ambush you. It's all very Elden Ring. And now I'm doing a little more work on that boss room where the giant tree root is at. I add some candelabras down here and some columns and I start placing those crystal skulls around everywhere. I also sized up this red stain from Strangerville and stack it on top of itself multiple times because stacking that red stain makes its color a lot deeper. It makes it look more convincing. It sells the point better. By the way, if I could just take this opportunity to self promo just for a minute, I am now on Patreon and my Patreon members get one day early access to all of my videos like this. My Patreon members got to watch this video one day earlier than all the rest of you. And if you want early access to my videos, then you should check out my Patreon too. Members also get access to a private channel on my Discord server, and they get to add a sim to my save file. So if any of that is of interest to you, check out my Patreon, link in bio. And we're nearing the home stretch now. We're not done with this build quite yet, but we're getting pretty close. I spent three streams working on this build, and that totaled up to between eight and a half and nine hours. So it is a big build, but it's not one of my biggest builds by any means. I've done some really major mega builds recently, and this was a small project in comparison. And I know eight and a half to nine hours still sounds like a lot, and it is, especially for a game where you can build a three bedroom house in an hour. So don't get me wrong, this is still a big build. It's just not one of those mega builds that took me like 40 plus hours. Speaking of which, I am currently doing a mega build right now, and it's the X-Men Mansion. For those who don't know, I am a huge X-Men fan, always have been. Ever since the 90s and the old X-Men cartoon, I used to collect the comic books, I used to draw fan art, and now that the X-Men cartoon from the 90s has been revived with the release of X-Men 97, it feels like perfect timing for me to build the X-Men Mansion in The Sims. And I am loving it, but oh my god, it is huge. And I have been working on that for now 10 streams in a row, and I haven't even gotten to the basement yet where all the X-Men stuff is, like Cerebro and the Danger Room. But I digress, that's a completely different build than the one you're watching right now. If you want to know more about the X-Men Mansion that I'm building, then you should tune into my live streams or just wait for the video. When will it be done? When it's done, I don't know. You can't rush art. Speaking of things being done, we are finally done with this build. So I'm going to stop talking and let you all enjoy a quick walkthrough. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate that very much. I'll see you in the next one.